This is Tim Wood, the Supply Pastor of Burwood United Methodist Church. We're doing this uh, video a little bit differently. It's going to be more like a podcast. Um, there will be a few things put on the uh, visual image, but uh, there won't be any video of me actually talking. The title of the message today is Abruptly. It is about when Elijah was taken up to heaven in a windstorm. The scripture reading today is in two different parts. The first one is 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 19 through 21. This is what happened after Elijah was on Mount Horeb and God passed by. He heard the sound of sheer silence and he was renewed. So starting with verse 19. So Elijah departed from there and found Elisha, Shaphat's son. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. Elisha was with the twelfth yoke. Elijah met up with him and threw his coat on him. Elisha immediately left the oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and my mother, Elisha said, then I will follow you. Elijah replied, Go, I'm not holding you back. Elisha turned back from following Elijah, took the pair of oxen, and slaughtered them. Then, with equipment from the oxen, Elisha boiled the meat, gave it to the people, and they ate it. Then he got up, followed Elijah, and served him. And then this is Second Kings chapter 2, verses 1-15. through 15 when Elijah goes to heaven. Now the Lord was going to take Elijah up to heaven in a windstorm, and Elijah and Elisha were leaving Gilgal. Elisha said to Elisha, Stay here, because the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The group of prophets from Bethel came out to Elisha. These prophets said to Elisha, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Elisha said, Yes, I know. Don't talk about it. Elijah said, Elisha, stay here, because the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So they went to Jericho. The group of prophets from Jericho approached Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? He said, Yes, I know. Don't talk about it. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, because the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So both of them went on together. Fifty members from the group of prophets also went along, but they stood at a distance. Both Elijah and Elisha stood beside the Jordan River. Elijah then took his coat, rolled it up, and hit the water. Then the water was divided in two. Both of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, What do you want me to do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, let me have twice your spirit. Elijah said, You've made a difficult request. If you can see me when I'm taken from you, then it will be yours. If you don't see me, it won't happen. They were walking along talking when suddenly a fiery chariot and fiery horses appeared and separated the two of them. Then Elijah went to heaven in a windstorm. Elisha was watching and he cried out, Oh, my father, my father, Israel's chariots and its riders. When he could no longer see them, See him, Elisha took hold of his clothes and rip and ripped them in two. Then Elisha picked up the coat that had fallen from Elijah. He went back and stood beside the banks of the Jordan River. He took the coat that had fallen from Elijah and hit the water. He said, Where is the Lord, Elijah's God? And when he hit the water, it divided in two. Then Elisha crossed over. The group of prophets from Jericho saw him from a distance. They said, Elijah's spirit has settled on Elisha. So they came out to meet him, bowing down before him. This ends the reading of the scripture. There's a lesson that has been taught to me for many years, but which I have yet to learn. I worry a lot about things that could cause trouble, but the big stuff in life, good or bad, comes out of left field. It comes abruptly. Abruptly means suddenly and unexpectedly. You can't predict it. As the insurance company ad says, life comes at you fast. Years ago, when my doctor told me I needed to stop working, I was caught off guard. She previously had diagnosed me with a rare neurological disorder, and she had determined that my condition had gone to the point where continuing to work was an invitation to a medical catastrophe. It happened abruptly. Elisha's work as a prophet appeared to end abruptly. He showed the power of God at the showdown with the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. Then Jezebel threatened to kill him, and so... Elijah fled. He became depressed. But he was renewed by God's voice of sheer silence at Mount Horeb. 
Then God gave Elijah work to do, and that work included the anointment of Elisha as his successor. Then at the beginning of the book of 2 Kings, it's a surprise to discover that Elijah's time on earth is about to end. The first verse simply states, Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, the Bible does not go into detail as to how this was communicated to Elijah, Elisha, and the prophets. But there really isn't any narrative build-up to this moment. It takes us by surprise, or abruptly. Elijah knew he needed to go to the Jordan River. Elisha knew what was going to happen. The groups of prophets Elijah and Elisha met along the way also knew what was happening. These were the very early prophets whom the Lord used to counter both Israel's king's claims to absolute power and false religion's invasion of Israelite society. They were hiding until Elisha joined with Elijah. Then those two went to the schools of prophets and taught them. Now Elijah tries to prevent Elisha from going with him to the Jordan, but Elisha would have none of it. Elisha wants to stay with Elijah to the end. As both, at both Bethel and Jericho, a group of prophets told Elisha, Did you know that the Lord is going to take away your master today? Both times Elisha said, Yes, I know. Don't talk about it. I interpret this as an angry re response by Elisha. Likely he was upset because his mentor was going to leave him. He would lose the companionship of Elijah and also Elijah's guidance. Elijah was kind of like a father figure to Elisha. But without Elijah, Elisha would be on his own. He was hurting. He didn't want to talk about it. At Jericho, 50 people from the group of prophets followed Elijah and Elisha to the Jordan River, but they kept their distance. But they were about to witness something astounding. Now at this point, let's go back to when Elijah obeyed God by finding Elisha and calling him to be a prophet. Elijah found Elisha while he was plowing with 12 pair of oxen before him. Though he belonged to a prominent family, he was at work in the field with the rest of the field hands. Though wealthy, he was not irresponsible or lazy. Elijah threw his coat on Elisha. Throwing the coat, also called a mantle, over the shoulders of Elisha was a symbolic act that called Elisha to be a prophet. The mantle was the official garment of a prophet. The mantle automatically marked a man as a prophet, a spokesman of God. It was also a symbol of sacrifice and commitment. The mantle represented a man's gift, the call of God, and the purpose for which God had called him. Elisha responded to the call without hesitation. Elisha asked Elijah if he could kiss his father and mother before leaving with Elijah. Now in the New Testament there are stories of people who want to follow Jesus but want to take care of some business first. Jesus rebuked them, telling them they needed to follow Jesus right then and there. It appears that Elisha is doing the same thing. Elijah permits it. But Elijah is not being hesitant. Elijah's request was prompted by two things. It was an act of genuine respect and honor for his parents. And he wanted to celebrate his entrance into this ministry and confirm his commitment to follow the Lord. By slaughtering the oxen and breaking his plow, Elijah also was cutting ties with his past life. In the case of the rich young ruler, Jesus told him to sell everything he had. Jesus did not want wealth to be a distraction to the man if he were to become a follower of Jesus. This is what Elisha did. He disconnected himself from his wealth so it would not hinder him as a prophet. Elisha gave up his quiet, peaceful, and rural life with his financial security to follow the Lord. He understood the times and what he must do. The world needed prophets. So at one moment, Elisha is plowing. Then, almost without warning, he is a prophet. That was abrupt. Elisha became a great comfort and encouragement to Elijah. At one time, Elijah thought he alone, he alone was left to carry on the work of God. But God told him that there were 7,000 who had not bowed to the, the need to Baal. Among these were several schools of prophets. They were hiding in caves, afraid to come out and speak for the Lord. But after Elijah's renewal on Mount Horeb, he began traveling over the country, teaching in these schools with Elisha as his attendant and disciple. And there certainly was a need for prophets to speak the truth of God at this time. At the time, the Israelites were divided into a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. There were some good kings who reigned in the southern kingdom, but in the northern kingdom where Elijah and Elisha served, all the kings were evil and there were no true revivals. If you take a good hard look at the world we live in, there is a need for prophets. There is a need for people to speak up for the truth and for the values of honesty and loving your neighbor as yourself. You don't have to stand on a street corner and shout. You don't even have to use words. Living a godly life makes you a prophet in the message that you send. People notice messages. I have some t-shirts that are printed with faith-based messages. 
I design the shirts. I don't sell them. I wear them. I receive some interesting responses to them, all positive. People see the message on my t-shirts. It's a part of my witness. And now back to our story at the Jericho River. The time came for Elijah to leave. When they finally arrived at the Jordan River, Elijah rolled up his mantle and stuck, struck the water with it. The waters were rolled back so that Elijah and Elisha could walk across the Jordan on dry land. When Elijah and Elisha arrived at the Jordan River, Elijah rolled up his mantle and struck the water with it. This part of the waters of the Jordan River so that Elijah and Elisha could walk over it on dry ground. Much as Israel earlier crossed the Jordan River and even earlier crossed the Red Sea. Elijah asked Elisha if there was anything he could do for him. Elisha asked for a double share of Elijah's spirit. Before Elisha can inherit a double portion of Elijah's prophetic spirit, however, Elijah insists that he must pass a rather strange test. Elisha must somehow watch his mentor be taken from him up to heaven. Elijah goes up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah passes the test of succession by seeing his mentor mysteriously disappear in this whirlwind. Elisha is realizing that he will be left, but that no clear path of succession has been paved for him. We know that God told Elijah to anoint Elisha as his successor. Maybe even the prophets knew this. But even when a person is designated as a leader, they still have to prove themselves and earn respect. When I became a newspaper editor at age 25, I had a staff of five people to supervise. I had to earn their respect. As a supervisor and leader, I wanted people to do what I said because they trusted me and believed in what they were doing. I didn't want them to do it because they felt like they had to in order to keep their job. Elisha picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. It was time to show the prophets that he was the real deal. Just as Elijah did, Elisha took the mantle of Elijah and struck the water. The water parted just as it had, just as it had before. This showed the group of prophets that indeed Elisha was the successor to Elijah. Here are some takeaways from this story. Things happen abruptly. Elijah's departure from this world happened abruptly. When Elijah threw his mantle onto Elisha, Elisha responded without hesitation. So must we respond to God's call without hesitation. We are called to be prophets and speak the truth. Speaking the truth can be done in several ways. Following Jesus means that you make sacrifices. And often we undergo preparation for those abrupt moments well before they happen. Amen.